Now, do you want to know what a avulsion fracture is? Avulsion is basically where there's, say, like a tendon or a ligament or something that attaches to the bone, and instead of the ligament or tendon tearing, the piece of bone breaks off. So it's an avulsion fracture. So the mechanism of injury, again, is, is going to be something pretty traumatic where they're going to have, you know, they're going to land on their head like this, or, you know, there could be you know, motor vehicle collision, somebody's rolling over, banging on the head, or sudden extension like that can affect the spinous process. So the symptoms are going to have pain, they may have, you know, they may have paralysis, they may have instability in the neck. Again, you're not going to see this usually acute, you're going to see it in a post-op or something like that. Right now we're talking about the cervical facet sprain or compression. Now, when you, when the neck flexes forward, we're talking about the vertebral motor unit, which part of the motor unit is going to get compressed when you flex forward and which part is going to get separated? Yeah, the anterior part is going to get compressed and then the posterior part is going to separate versus when we come back like this, what are we putting pressure on? Posterior part, which is the facet joints. Okay? So you can have, say for example, somebody has a cervical acceleration, deceleration injury, or what's called a whiplash. When their hand bends forward, they can stretch and tear the ligaments on the facet capsule on the back, or they could the, part, the vertebra on the front could, if they compress enough, you could have a little bit of a fracture there. And then when the head snaps back the other way, and they're compressing the vertebra on the front, on the back, the, the facet joints, and then what could happen to the anterior longitudinal ligament on the front? It's going to get stretched. Okay? And then also when you flex forward like that, what ligament would get, what's the one that's the farthest back that would most likely get to get torn? What goes between the spinous process? Yeah, interspinous ligament. So that can get torn like that. So what we're talking about here is the facet capsule is going to get stretched and torn from flexion, and the facet joints themselves are going to get compressed and irritated from, from backwards bending. Okay. So just to get you thinking in terms of of what we're going to get into with special tests, how could you differentiate between trying to figure out if somebody stretched and tore the capsule or if they compressed and irritated the facet joint? What position are you going to put their head in to try to see if it's a ligament stretch on the facet? Yeah, flex. So you're going to flex forward. Okay? And then to flex, extend back, you're putting pressure on the facet joint. So if it's backward, then maybe there's some irritation to the joint or the cartilage versus if you're bending forward, it's a ligament or the facet cap. So a lot of times with facet sprain or irritation, they're going to have pain in one specific spot of the neck. A lot of times it's one side of the facet's injured more than the other. So they say, well, whenever I turn in this position, I feel this pain on this one certain spot of my neck. So it's going to be some type of mechanism of injury or the head snapping back and forth like that. So when we're talking about certain conditions, what you want to do is to try to understand, to differentiate in their history. Again, it's like I say, you're starting out with the bullseye and you're starting to narrow it in. Keep in mind of what kind of history and what's the, the distinguishing characteristics of one injury versus another. Okay? So if somebody said, yeah, I had an acute trauma, I got hit from behind, my head was turned like this, so their head could snap back and forth like that. You're going to be thinking of the nerve tissue problems, you know, joint surfaces, ligaments, things like that. Versus if somebody says, well, you know, gradually my neck started getting stiff and it hurts me in the morning, I can't move. Once I get going, I move better. What type of thing does that sound like? I mean, I know we haven't covered it yet. Arthritis. Yeah. Arthritis, DJD. That typically is going to say, it's like a, a problem of inertia. If you're, at, if you're at rest, it's hard to get going. Once you, once you get moving, then it tends to stiffen up and make it stiff at the end of the day. So it'll either be in the morning or in the evening, but during the day when you're moving, it doesn't tend to
the body, but something like this, the set problem, that's going to happen consistently whenever they turn their head in a certain way. And then a special test that we'll do for that is, like I mentioned before, foraminal compression. Okay? So how is that going to be reproduced in the symptoms? When I do this, what am I doing to the joint? Yeah, so if there's joint, if there's joint problems, we're compressing it. Right? So let's say again, if we're going to try to differentiate between if somebody has a joint problem in the facets versus a capsule problem, if I and then to accentuate the pain on the pressure on the facets, we're going to put an extension, and it can even go to one side like that. So right now, I'm maximizing the compression on the left side, and I press down like that. Now versus what am I doing when I pull up? Like when I pull up like that, what's it going to do to the joint capsule on the ligaments? It's going to stretch it. So if somebody has a tear in their ligaments, could their head, could it make it worse when we pull up? Right. So those are the ideas, like I said, the more that you understand the anatomy and behind the test, that you're going to help to identify between two different types of injuries or conditions. And then this O'Donoghue maneuver is basically a combination of passive range of motion and active resistant range of motion. So what we'll do is we'll have the patient do passive range of motion where you pull like this. So what am I doing right now? What stretchers am I stretching on the back? Same things like we talked about, the facet capsule and the ligaments. Okay? So if they have pain like this, it's probably a ner nerve tissue injury, ligaments, joint capsule, things like that. Okay? If I ask the patient, if I hold my hand like this and I ask them to pull back, what am I doing now? Muscles. So then, what kind of injury would that be if they have pain with that? Contractile tissue, right? So this is a thing to differentiate between sprains and strain. But the thing is, is most times people have both. You know, that's why you have diagnosis cervical sprain strain. There's supposed to be a video that's playing on here, but once, at some point we'll get it to work. Alright, so now here we're talking about cervical disc herniations. So it can be a gradual onset, insidious onset, or it can be a specific trauma. So, what's this part right here? Annulus fibrosis. Right, annulus fibrosis. And then what's this part here? Linkage fibrosis. So it's going through all the all the full thickness of the endless fibrosis, and it's pressing out here. And these, this right here, you know what that is? The spinal cord. And then these are the nerve roots coming out right here. So the nerve root gets irritated from the disc herniation. Okay. Most of the time. The disc herniations tend to go posterolateral. Because what do we have going up and up and down right here? On the back side of the vertebral body? Remember? The posterior longitudinal ligament. So the disc herniation is not going to go straight back because we've got the ligament right there. It's usually going to go off to the side. Right. Now we talked about extension puts pressure on what part of the vertebral motor unit? Set, yeah. Anterior or the, yeah, set, set, or the posterior. Okay? And then when we put forward flexion, what part of the motor unit gets compressed with that? Anterior of the disc. So what's that going to do to the disc? When we flex forward like that, which direction is the herniated material going to be forced? Posterior. Okay? So a lot of times people have, if they're having problems with flexion, it's maybe more likely going to be a disc problem. So if we're going to do cervical compression tests and we do it in extension and it hurts like that, what are we checking? Posterior part, right? If you come forward like this and you compress, you may be more likely to pre reproduce that with a disc problem. Right? So the idea is that you need to understand the anatomy and apply subtle variations when you do these certain tests to identify what tissue is involved. 